Welcome to the lecture on mitosis. This is for those of you who are not in class on Monday um, after speed week. Mitosis is the process of cell division and it's part of the cell cycle that we learned about during the reading last week and the worksheets that you completed during speed week. And remember, mitosis happens for just your regular cell in your body, lots of different types of cells. That is different than the process that happens in what's called meiosis, which we will learn about next, and that's for sex cells instead. Feel free to stop and pause this video at any point to take a few notes um, as you are going along. So cell division, what is it and why do cells do it? Cell division is constantly taking place in your body. Your body, your cells can be damaged, they can get too large, um, or they just might need to constantly be reproduced and replaced. And so mitosis is constantly happening in your body, in all of your cells, um, and it's happening at different rates depending on the type of your cells, but it keeps those cells alive and well. There are a few different phases of mitosis that we can see during here from um, interface, which is actually not part of the mitosis, and that's the, um, the normal functioning of the cell, but um, this is prophase to late prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, late anaphase, telophase, and then finally we have cytokinesis, which is where the cytoplasm splits and we have two new cells that are formed. So this is just the basic timeline of a cell's life. It starts in interphase. This is where it spends 90% of its time. There are three different stages of interphase, which we'll go into, and then there are four main phases of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and finally cytokinesis is when the cytoplasm splits and we have two new daughter cells, which are exactly the same as the parent cell. As I said, um, interphase 90% of approximately 90% of the time the cell spends in interphase. Um, so this is just the time when it's living and functioning as a normal cell. As you can see, the, there are not any really dark lines in this. The chromosomes in the cell during interphase are just spread out throughout the cells. Um, but during the prop time of interphase, those chromosomes are replicated. There are other proteins that are made in order for cell division to be ready to go. So there are three phases of interphase. The first one is called the G1 phase or the growth one phase um, of the cell cycle. This is just normal growth. This is when the cell is carrying out all of its functions and doing the jobs that it has in the body or inside of the plant or whatever organism it's in. So this is just the growth phase. Then we move into S phase or synthesis phase. And this is where the right here, the DNA, the chromosomes are copied and duplicated. So we have two sets of chromosomes in order for um, us to make, or for the cell to make two new cells that are exactly the same as their original one. So here you can see in G1, we only have one chromosome and here we have two. And then finally in G2, growth two or gap two phase, um, this is when the microtubules and other proteins that are necessary for cell division are made. So these include um, the spindle fibers, the mic um, which are made of microtubules. It's a specific kind of structural protein. Um, centrioles are another microtubule. So these are all the, the structural parts that are necessary for the mechanical um, aspect of cell division. Here we go at the um, G2. So after the cell has done its normal functions, it's replicated its DNA, it's made these microtubules, we're ready for mitosis. And here you can see mitosis in the overall cell cycle is only about 10%. Majority of our time is spent in interface here, but we have this short little time when we're dividing and when the cell turns into two cells. 
<clears throat> the first stage of mitosis is prophase, and this is actually the longest stage of my of mitosis. Some textbooks, including yours, splits prophase up into two: to prophase and then prometaphase. Um, or but others just include all of prophase together. Here you can see that in prophase we are starting to see first the nuclear membrane is breaking apart so it's less of a strong um, outline around the cell the nucleolus disappears and the chromosomes are starting to become visible later in prophase so here's an earlier one we don't have the strong nuclear membrane that you can see in this cell that's gone here but then in later prophase the chromosomes are um, condensing that chromatid material. Um, it's tightening up and it's shaping into these X lines. Um, each half is one sister chromatid. So we've got a sister chromatid here and a sister chromatid here and they're connected by this centromere. Also in prophase we are having the spindle apparatus which will eventually be used to separate the cells is forming and that is attaching to the chromosomes in order to pull them apart towards the poles later in this process. That spindle apparatus is made of those microtubule proteins which I mentioned earlier. Um, finally, the centrioles are also starting to form at the poles, also in order to prepare to pull apart, pull apart this cell into these two cells. So here you can see this is a cell that's in interphase, once it's in early prophase, that nuclear membrane has evaporated and disappeared, broken up, and then this chromatin, which was all, it's the material that makes up the chromosomes, which is spread out throughout this cell and interphase, starts to clump together, and finally later in prophase, it's formed into these um, more dense chromosomes, like we can see in this image here. The second phase of mitosis is called metaphase. And here in metaphase, the nuclear membrane is completely gone and we have these dense chromosomes which are starting to line up across what's called the equator of the cell. You can think of the cell as a global, um, this is the globe. Here we have the poles at either end and this is the equator running halfway across the middle of the cell. These chromosomes are lining up in the, in the center along the poles. You can see the outlines of the microtubules, which is part of the spindle apparatus that's forming um, and connecting the chromosomes to the centrioles, which would be at either pole, so the north pole and the south pole. This is a short stage, but it's very necessary. It's important that these chromosomes line up accurately so that each new cell has the same exact chromosomes and gets half of each of them, um, half of each of the duplicated ones, and we don't end up with one cell that has some of the chromosomes and one that has others. So a short phase, but important that it happens correctly. Here again, you can see a little bit different picture. This is of that spindle apparatus forming. We have just a different colored dye on it. Here are the chromosomes lining up and the spindle apparatus is forming. To review, this is a cell that's in interphase. You can see the chromatin that's all spread out throughout the cell. This cell looks like it's in prophase because that chrom those chromosomes are starting to condense and um, form into the chromosomes, but they have not lined up like they have in this cell right here. Anaphase is the next stage, and in this stage, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. So the spindle apparatus pulls them, t pulls the chromos chromatids, which is one of the two chromosomes that were connected together at the centromere. It pulls them apart and pulls the microtubules, pull them the chromosomes towards the poles. So we're starting to separate the cell into um, two separate cells and pulling away from the middle. 
Um, this is where the spindle apparatus and those microtubule proteins are really necessary because they do that mechanical work which pulls apart these chromosomes. As they're pulled apart, the this this whole spindle apparatus shortens. We are beginning to form two cells that have daughter chromosomes, or those two, one of each of the chromatids. Here you can see an early anaphase. The line is split. This where in metaphase they were lined up across the equator. They're starting to be pulled to the north and to the south by these spindle fibers. And as the cell cycle continues, we reach telophase, which is where the chromosomes are pulled all the way to the poles, um, each at either end, and they start to relax. Instead of being tightly condensed into these chromosomes, they relax back into that um, uncondensed form that we saw during interphase. The spindle apparatus begins to disassemble because those spindle fibers are no longer needed. And you can see that the cell prepares for final division, which in a plant cell like this with the cell wall, it needs to recreate a cell wall. So it puts what's called a cell plate in there. This is happening during the final stage um, of the cell cycle, which is cytokinesis. We can see that cell plates formed um, to separate and build two new cells. Cytokinesis, not considered part of um, mitosis, but is just a different stage of the cell cycle. This is where the cytoplasm splits apart. For animal cells, um, microfilaments pinch off the cytoplasm, form a new membrane, um, and in plant cells, this cell plate forms, which turns into the cell wall in order to build that cell wall, which is um, in plant cells. And voila, at the end of cytokinesis, we have two new cells. They are exactly like each other. They are identical to each other and they're identical to their parent cell. So we have two new daughter cells formed from the one original parent cell. Take a little time to write down some notes, draw each stage of mitosis, remember, and interphase. Remember with interphase, we have three stages, G1, S, G2, then mitosis. We have four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and finally, we have cytokinesis. So that was a little bit of a few more slides just say, showing the same thing that we just talked about with, with, with drawings instead of microscope um, slides. Here, for a quick review, take a moment to place these in order um, of different mitosis stages, starting first with interphase, and then we'll have the four um, stages of mitosis. So pause the video if you need some time to look back at your notes. Otherwise, we start with interphase, and then we go to prophase, when the chromosomes um, condense, and then the nuclear envelope breaks up. This spindle apparatus forms out here with the microtubules. Then in metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the equator. This one's just flipped. 
Um, so the equator is going vertically instead of horizontally, but we have these two poles out here where the centrioles are, and then the spindle apparatus connects them. In anaphase, the sister chromatids are pulled apart, um, so the chromosomes are broken apart. One of each sister chromatid goes uh, migrates towards each of the poles. And then in telophase, these sister chromatids reach the poles. They begin to um, decondense. A nuclear envelope forms. The spindle apparatus is disassembled. And finally, after telophase, we have cytokinesis, where this um, the cytoplasm splits, and we are left with two daughter cells that are identical. So why do cells divide? First of all, it can be a size requirement. Um, the larger a cell becomes, the more demands that the cell places on its DNA. Um, and so it also ha has trouble put bringing food across its membrane, getting all of the things it needs to support its own life, and um, getting rid of the waste products and that it makes. So we have less surface volume, surface area to volume ratio, which makes it ch more challenging for the cell to receive all the nutrients it needs and be able to signal with other cells and molecules. Here we can see we have these protein channels that let food bring food and nutrients in and get waste out. But as this surface area to volume um, ratio drops, we have fewer protein channels, but more um, energy demands of the cell. So it becomes hard for the cell to keep up with that ratio. Cell division is also important to repair old cells, um, to keep up with growth when you start as a little baby, but grow into um, your own adult selves. A lot of cell division is necessary in order to allow for that growth. Um, it allows for new life, for regeneration of cells, for healing. If you cut yourself, um, it's, so the cell theory says that all living things are made of cells. Cells, the basic unit of structure and function in all living things. It's our that molecule that builds up um, each individual and unique organism and allows it to be its unique self. And finally, all cells come from pre-existing cells, and this happens through this cell division process, which we just discussed. Next week, we'll move into meiosis, which is the cell division for um, sex cells and allows for sexual reproduction and it allows for passing on of chromosomes from your parents to your offspring, um, which allow you to become who you are. And we will go into that in more detail next week.